because of everything that went down at Money in the Bank. And we're going to get to that. What do you now think of the NXT slash WWE Tag Team Championship match between Jakara Jackson, okay, and Lash Legend, and now Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan? Well, I'm sad I'm not getting Ronda and Shayna. What was such written on life. Ronda's forehead? Dude, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a, uh, it's, I forget what it was. It's some, uh, you know, they're nerds, so some nerd thing. Talked about it yesterday, <laughs> you know. So, Money in the Bank. Yes. Dragon Ball Z, that's what it was. It's professional. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z reference on her head. Mm. Got it. M for, uh, I, I, you know, I never trust these guys. All right, so we had the men's Money in the Bank, which was Butch, L.A. Knight, Logan Paul, Ricochet, Santos, Escobar, and Shinsuke Nakamura. And it was ultimately won by Damian Priest. He is Mr. Money in the Bank. And I thought this match was pretty much outstanding. It was great. You know, he had one near-death experience where uh, Ricochet and Logan Paul, they came up with an idea. This was actually kind of like the... Uh, it was kind of like that sting spot that he did on Wednesday where they're setting up those tables and, like, everybody and their mother knows this ain't going to go right, and then it doesn't. And in this match, it's a little different because we didn't know what they were going to try before they tried it, but when you when you figure out what they were trying to do, like, it's it's actually much crazier than what Sting did. They wanted to get the ladder tipped over while they were on it. Land standing on the top rope, each facing a different direction. Use the bounce on landing to do a Spanish fly to the outside and through a table. That was their plan, okay? So it should surprise nobody that it went wrong, and uh, thankfully nobody died, but it was horrifying. And Logan Paul's shoulder was, like, scratched all the way, bleeding everywhere. I mean, it was insane. But Damien Priest won, and clearly... You know, they've got a they've got an ongoing plan here with Damian Priest and Finn Balor and you know, Finn Balor's been waiting seven years to win that title from Seth Rollins. And now it went awry. He did not beat Seth Rollins, as we'll get to, but now he wants that title, and now Damian Priest has the briefcase, which he can cash in for the title. So clearly there's a split coming here that they've been building up for well over a month now. And uh We'll see what happens. We had Liv Morgan and Raquel beating Ronda and Shayna when Shayna turned on Ronda. And we'll talk more about this here in a moment. Gunther and Matt Riddle, I thought was just about the best seven-minute match you could have. I mean, this match was so great. And yeah, uh, Gunther dominated the match. Well, guess what? He's Gunther, and he's the Intercontinental Champion, and he's on his way to to uh, breaking the Honky Tonk Man's record. And uh, Matt Riddle's injured, you know, his foot's all messed up in storyline. Gunther chopped his foot repeatedly. He chopped his foot to set up an ankle lock and get the submission. Chopping the foot to set up the, the ankle lock. Tremendous. Died. It was the greatest yes. finish I ever saw. Cody beat Dominic in a, uh, it was a good match. Not as much heat as I expected because, like, there was just so much heat on the entire show. It's like... This crowd was unbelievable for literally the entire show, with the exception of the first 15 minutes of the main event because it was just such slow-going stuff. But for the second half, I mean, they were out of their minds. But anyway, good match. Cody wins, obviously setting up whatever they're going to do at SummerSlam with Brock Lesnar. It'll be a stipulation match of some sort. Io Sky won the women's Money in the Bank, Bank ladder match. I don't think this was the best women's Money in the Bank match ever, but it was certainly in the top. 50% for sure. And uh, EO won. A lot of crazy spots. You know, Trish at 47 doing stuff that... What's she thinking, dude? Like... I don't know. She's... she's uh, You know, I it's think actually mom. we all we all can say yeah. thank you, Trish. Yes. The effort you're putting in here. Absolutely. Nobody, nobody got hurt. Although Triple H did say somebody twisted an ankle on the way to the back, but he didn't specify. It could have been men's or women's match. But uh, that was that. And so, look, a very creative finish, too. You got to mention about this. That's what kind of said it more than anything was you get the handcuffed spot. It's like, okay, we've seen this a million times. Just how's it going to play out? But with the way Bailey screwed EO and then EO using that against her, tying her to Becky Lynch, and then climbing over her back to win the briefcase, very, very good. And then uh, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Seth beat him. 
It was a great match with a bad finish. Yeah. And that was Damian Priest coming out to watch. Finn Balor got distracted, tossed off the top, got stomped, got pinned. I mean, the uh, you know, the match, the wrestling was great. I mean, this was great wrestling. Finn Balor is the best Finn Balor he's been in years. And Seth, the, bell to bell is always great. And then there was the main event, the Usos and the Bloodline. Where's everybody on the chat that was telling me Friday? There ain't no way the Usos are winning. There ain't no way the J is pinning Roman Reigns. Remember how absolutely positive people were about that? Well, there's only one finish. We talked about it Friday, and that was that J Uso should pin Roman Reigns. And in fact, J Uso pinned Roman Reigns. They had the greatest near fall I ever saw, where the Usos hit the one D when the ref was down for a visual pin. So that got the fans already thinking, well, you know, they're losing. And then when the ref was down, they did a double team where Solo hit the thumb and Roman Reigns hit the spear at the same time on Jay. And just then the ref woke up and these fans were doing a chant. It was the first time they turned on the show. They were certain it was over. BS chance. And both Usos kicked out. And this place blew up. And then Solo put himself through a table. Usos went up top. Jay hit that big splash on Roman Reigns. One, two, three. First time Roman Reigns has been pinned in three years. It's unbelievable. What a reaction to this finish. It was great. And now we've got a main event for SummerSlam. We'll talk more about this show, get Mike's thoughts, and uh, move on from there after the break. Observer Live. Observer Live. I can't. It's the goal post moving again. Oh, boy. What oh, man, no one will ever beat you, Roman. These oh. Usos aren't going to beat the guy. Jay oh, beats him. On. Nah, don't matter. That means nothing. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen at WrestleMania next year when Cody beats Roman and wins the titles? So you're like, ah, he should have beat him last year. You know, some people are going to be saying that. There's still some people that believe Sami Zayn should have beaten him. There's still people that believe Drew McIntyre should have beaten him. And you know what? If you can tell a story, you can make the claim subjectively. Or, you know, that, hey, look, you could do that. And if you have the right pieces in place, you know, the story, the company still would have gotten as hot. But the bottom line is, this is what they've done. This is what they've done to keep the company and get the company this hot. And I'm surprised people were not more bullish on the fact that Jey Uso would pin Roman Reigns on Saturday. I mean, we have, what, 10 months till WrestleMania? It's about when it is, seven months to the Royal Rumble roundabout there of course he was going to be facing somebody else and this whole thing with jay uso i mean it, it was leading to either jimmy uso turning on jay which obviously didn't happen this is what they're doing or jay defeating roman to keep the whole storyline moving to show some some weakness in roman reigns because he has been such a fixture in this storyline where he can just sit down in the middle of a match and go through a monologue or pull Paul Heyman over to do some improv to the camera as the crowd is ripping him like there needs to be some sort of fault lines and that's what this part of the story has been he's lost Jay and Jimmy you know he thought he was going to lose solo but now Jay is getting the advantage. Jimmy is getting the advantage. Paul Heyman said it outside the ring. Do you want your kids to sit at his table? So there is. this is the part of the story where now Roman is showing some, like, you know, weakness here. And it sets up a title match with Jay. And then likes Lee sets up a title match with Jimmy well, uh, or somebody well, affiliated. I don't know about Jimmy, but I mean, the but whole somebody thing. Somebody affiliated is going to come through. It's, it's patently obvious what this year is. And if people want to get mad at it, it's fine. Jay's not winning at some. SummerSlam because he shouldn't because the story of this year is the destruction of the bloodline following WrestleMania. He's lost the Usos. Yeah, he's going to beat Jay, but then you're going to have the split of Roman Reigns and Solo, and then you're going to have the Roman Reigns solo match, which Solo is not, nor should he win, and that's going to lead to next year's WrestleMania where he's got one thing left. The only thing that he's got left is his undisputed title, And that's when he loses that. And that's the end of the story. That'll be finishing the story. So, yeah. I mean, I don't want to hear people saying, ah, Jay should, he shouldn't win. Jay should not win. Now, granted, the day of the show, Jay may be so over that it's like, you know, maybe he should win. I'm playing DJ tonight. 
Vinny, what are you wearing? I went with the uh, shirt and vest combo, which was, was, in fact, a thing in the 90s. We got Craig here, who appears to have, uh, he's Craig Corrosion. Yeah. The ultimate warrior. Da, 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 da. I'm wearing an Everclear t-shirt, one of my favorite bands from um, that decade. Granny actually has a special shirt on today, Granny. Granny is in her 90s. Yeah, would you like, kitties. yeah, she's in her 90s. That's how she's celebrating She's the dressed 90s. in the 1890s? I got my kitties on. You got your what? Kitties. Oh, your kitties? Yeah, that's not what you thought you said, Brian. Yeah. Bye. All right. Get out of here, Granny. Gret 5. Happy 90s. I wish you wouldn't do that. What? They remind me all the time. No, we're doing a 90s, like the 1990s. We're doing a 90s party. Oh, okay. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.